Have you ever bought biology? Put it on, spread it on, you know, inject it in the soil and do all that stuff? Well, you wasted your money most likely. And here's why. Welcome back to American Bee French. My name is Jesse. Today I want to just take a couple minutes and talk about why you may have wasted your money on biology and that sometimes, guys, we mess up. Now, I am no different than you, you are no different than me, but I have screwed up. And before, I thought the same thing that a lot of people have thought, is that you can just fix all the soil issues that you have with biology. And you're not wrong, it's just that you may be able to spend that money better and get the job done just a little bit quicker and in a better fashion so that when you do go ahead and put biology in the ground, added from another source that, you know, is proven and things like that, you get your money's worth. Now, we all make mistakes and let me show you one of mine. So behind me, you can see corn on your right and on your left. Now the corn on the left is great. It looks pretty good. It's, it's gonna turn out pretty good for silage corn. Now right, right here over this shoulder, you see this corn's pretty short and uh, pretty nasty. Well, that's because I got in a hurry. I went ahead and was changing water and I was changing water really fast when it was hot outside. I wasn't taking the time to look, make sure the pivots were working like they should. And I had a plug sprinkler and I had a plug sprinkler for quite a while. And look, that cost me this strip of corn now. You know, it's a small drop in the bucket, but it's still a mistake that I made that cost me money. And I'm afraid that a lot of farmers have jumped on the biology bandwagon and made that same mistake. Now, I absolutely love what they're doing. I love that they're thinking about biology and adding biology back to the soil and getting the biology to work right. The problem is, is that a lot of times the people that are selling you biology or the biology that you're growing, your soil has to meet a certain set of parameters for biology to thrive and even survive. And those people aren't telling you that. And I think it's important that we kind of talk about what those parameters are. Now, bacteria and fungus, they're funny fellows and they only work under certain conditions. The first condition and probably arguably the most important because it leads to all the rest of the conditions is this biology has to breathe. They need air to survive just like I do and you do. But how does biology get air in, in the ground? Well, actually healthy soil is comprised of 25% air. So what you have to be able to do is you have to make sure that your, your soil can respirate like we talked about before. You take a soil penetrometer, you push it in the ground. You want between 100 and 150 PSI of pressure. If it's above that, guess what? It can't breathe. It's literally suffocating in the ground. And if it's below that, it can't breathe either because there's literally no air to hold on to to breathe. So that's the first and probably most important thing that biology needs to survive, the soil has to respirate so they can breathe. On top of that, have you ever checked your carbon to nitrogen ratio? Did you know that biology usually doesn't even start working till the, the carbon to nitrogen ratio is 15 to one in your soil? And I would almost bet 95% or plus people in the country that farm have a carbon to nitrogen ratio that's 10 to one or less. And that's very common, like every soil, including my soil. I'm struggling with my carbon to nitrogen ratio now. My highest one is 12 to one. I gotta build that up. I gotta add some carbon to this ground in some way or another to help get my carbon to nitrogen ratio up so my biology can work. Cause like I said, they're finicky fellows and they only work if you give them the condition to work. Another thing on carbon to nitrogen ratio, your typical fertilizer guy or most people are gonna tell you, you have eight to 10 times the carbon than you do to nitrogen. So you would think in your mind that, wow, I have plenty of carbon in my soil. You don't. 15 to one is just where it starts. You really want to be mid 20s to 30 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. Good compost is 30 to one carbon to nitrogen. So just let's keep that in mind. You need to get your more carbon in your ground. I almost guarantee it, almost 99.9% .9 guarantee it. Another thing that we can check for our biology to live and thrive is the electrical conductivity in the soil. So each little heartbeat that the biology give off is electrical impulses. Just like we have electricity inside of our bodies, there's electricity in the soil. And you know what? When the electrical charge is too high, guess what? Biology doesn't want to work. And when it's too low, they're probably lethargic. They don't want to work either. So you take an EC meter and you should probably use the one that I put in the description because if you don't, the numbers can be way off and I'm pretty sure it's maximals or millimoles, but we want between 0.3 and 0.6 on this EC meter to make sure that our biology 
can thrive. If not, we need to fix that problem. And depending on if you're high or low, there's certain things you do on top of soil respiration and adding carbon and things like that. Those usually all play into fixing that same problem, but it's another problem we can check for. Finally, one of the last things that sometimes is overplayed and not overplayed enough, probably, is pH. Soil pH needs to be neutral for biology to really work. If your pH is too high, they don't want to work. If it's too low, they don't want to work. Obviously, that's because the soil is not in a healthy state, and biology really only work properly when the soil is in a healthy state. So instead of next time taking all that money and dumping it into biology, maybe consider doing a few tests and spending a little bit of money on a few tools to help you better understand your soil and how it's working. And then that way, when you get to a certain point and the biology that you already have that's in the ground, that's dormant, begins to wake up, maybe you can add some more biology to that and make them more potent. And guess what? You're going to have one heck of a potent soil system. My name is Jesse. This is American Bee French. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.